G-I-F-T. Find out what that means to me. I don't know why I decided to start today's show sounding like a Motown singer, but today we're going to talk about how to get in front of your ideal customer on a little known platform called LinkedIn. Listen, if you have any desire to engage an audience or to share your message or to get paid well for your idea, your product, your service, or your expertise, I can tell you that LinkedIn is a great place to do that. The interaction is high, the connectivity is high, and there's been, I don't think there's ever been an opportunity quite like there is on LinkedIn. In a moment, we're gonna roll up our sleeves and get into the top nine things that you can do on LinkedIn to grow your platform, to grow your connections, and to grow your business. But before I do that, this is the Bunker Bash, and I am your host, Ed Rush. We stream live every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, to show you some of the best tips for growing your brand, sharing your message, and changing the world. All right, hey, it's Ed, welcome to the show. By the way, if you're joining us live, jump onto the right-hand side on YouTube and say hello in chat. If you're on Facebook, please say hello underneath. Also, click that like button. That tells Facebook and YouTube and the social media platforms that, hey, this content is something that you want, which means it's something that someone else wants, and uh, it just shows it to more people. So I would love if you would do that as a favor to me. Today, we're talking about LinkedIn. Now, we are in the middle of Experts Week. If you remember, uh, on Monday, I share the top nine live streaming tips to grow your business. On Tuesday, I brought in my friend Marquetta Breslin to teach the top nine social media tips to explore your brand. Yesterday, my man Paul Culligan came in, podcasting tips to share your message. Today, we are in LinkedIn tips. And tomorrow, I am going to get with Jim House, uh, my book publisher, to talk about some great tips for writing a book and sharing your message. Now, I'm going to share a little secret with you, which is this. Some of these topics, I'm better off than others. Like, for example, tomorrow, I consider myself an expert when it comes to creating, launching, and marketing books. I mean, I've done events around this topic and created uh, literally hundreds of best-selling authors. And in fact, it might even be in the thousands at this point. So that's a topic that I know quite a bit, a bit about. So tomorrow with Jim, you're going to see a little bit more interaction and me sharing more of my content. But today, with my special guest, Yakov Smart, I'm actually going to be learning along with you. So get ready to take notes, roll up your sleeves, and get ready to have fun. Before I do that, I have to share a little personal antidote. Yesterday, I was having one of those days. <laughs> Do you ever have one of those days where you're like, man, the world is conspiring against me? I don't know. You know, sometimes you just get in one of those moods. And the truth is, I'm feeling pretty good today. But yesterday afternoon, man, I was in one of those, you know, like, uh, you know, just kind of Ed versus the world. So usually when I do that, uh, I just get in my car and I go for a walk. Because, you know, sometimes just taking a walk makes you feel all good inside. And the place that I love to take a walk uh, is down uh, near the beach here in San Diego. So I went uh, down to my favorite little beach. Uh, it's actually down at Imperial Beach. There's this huge stretch of beach where there's nobody at. Uh, it's actually part of the Navy base where you can walk right next to the water. And I was going to go there just to have a little time of prayer and meditation and reflection. And I got to the beach and the beach was closed. You think about that for a second. The beach is closed. I pulled up uh, a recent San Diego Union Tribune. Here's the here's the picture from the Union Tribune. It's a surfer. <laughs> it's a surfer who's getting uh, cited by the police for surfing. Okay. I'm, look, I'm not an infectious disease expert, okay? And I know that coronavirus came from China. And I know that the Pacific Ocean in, in California somehow is connected to the Pacific Ocean in China. But I'm positive. I'm positive. Even, even if I'm not a medical professional, that nobody's getting this from surfing. From surfing. So anyway, supposedly I couldn't take a walk on the beach. <laughs> only, only between me and God, whether I went for that walk or not. All right, so I want to say, <laughs> say hello. I want to say hello to some of you in chat. David Zetz, my man. By the way, David, I was looking at some of your workout videos yesterday. Um, 
Yeah, so can't let the beach get COVID-19. <laughs> yes, sending light into the world. Thank you, Diana. We're going to take this up into a positive feel. Uh, by the way, if you just joined us, this is Ed Talks. Uh, Ed Talks. This is Bunker Bash. Uh, just so you know, name's actually going to change soon uh, for reasons which I'll explain on Monday. This is the Bunker Bash, the most positive place on the planet for insanely insanely implementable ideas. I know, she says, how are you gonna close the beach? They put they put up signs, they put up signs that said, you can't cross this line for your safety. That's what it said. All right, Sasha says, same yesterday, good to know it happens to the best of us, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Barry, COVID-19 really is a beach. Oh my goodness. David Stowe, good morning, good to see you. Matt Head, my man. Uh, <laughs> Jim Butts, Tom Ashton says, better late than ever. Howdy, Ed, uh, said Robert, my man uh, from Texas. Hello, Charlie and Delisa and in India. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I I, seriously, I could I could go on and on about this. You can ask my wife. I was, I was, I was, I mean, I was, be, I, I, sent, I just sat there and went, they closed the beach. They closed the beach. I want you to I want to put this in context for a second, and then we're going to get into our content for today. McDonald's is open. You can drive through, and you can get that food. You can get that awful food through a window passed to you from a human being who made that food, but you can't go to the beach. You can't go to the park, all right? Now, I know I promised that this would be a positive place, and so here's the positive. Remember I said to you yesterday, the good news is it's either going to get worse and then we're all going to be in charge or it's going to get better and we're all going to be in charge. But when would now be a great time for us to start raising up some leaders to take back over the state, the county, the country, the world? Uh, and man, I'm starting to think about, I'm actually starting to think about doing a virtual event, a one day event coming up in the next three to six weeks where we all get on board and try to figure out how to lead, how to lead our country. All right, Coach Coach G-Man, that's Gary Rush. Good morning, everything on this end is even without the beach. <laughs> Thank you, Frank, Patriot. <laughs> David says, I'm 20 steps from the beach, and it teases me. You know what? Oh, I, can't, I can't encourage civil disobedience just yet, uh, but we're getting, <laughs> we're getting there. Oh my goodness. All right. Welcome, 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 uh, Rudery. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, today, we are talking about the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. My guest uh, who's joining me today is Yakov Smart. Let me just introduce, introduce Yakov and tell you how he got here. Uh, I'm interested in people, I'm interested in people who really know what's really happening on a platform. Uh, I am personally not interested in some fake guru who goes around speaking on a topic but doesn't actually do the actual topic that they teach on. And the truth is there's internet marketing experts out there that don't even do internet marketing or there's there's uh, Facebook experts out there who can't even manage their own Facebook and there's leadership experts whose people all hate them. And there's real estate experts who don't own any real estate property. But I'm interested in people who have been there, done that, and are still doing it. And Yakov came to me initially as a client, we did a coaching day together and, and this happens maybe one out of every 20 coaching days where I go, dude, I need your help. Uh, and so Yakov jumped in and helped me uh, with my LinkedIn. And we're going to be talking about some of that work today, but I consider him one of the smartest people on the planet on LinkedIn, not because he's out there teaching every weekend, but because he's out there doing it. Uh, I have almost 10,000 connections on LinkedIn. Yakov's got over 12. Uh, those connections, just so you know, on LinkedIn, I think a single connection is worth about a thousand on a place like Facebook, uh, because these are real people who have real businesses or are, are connected to real businesses. Yakov is the author of Disrupting LinkedIn. More on that in just a second. But before I just let you roll, buddy, welcome to the show, man. I'm glad you're here. Hey, so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Yakov dialed in from his bunker. Um, and so let's get started. So we've uh, Yakov has nine tips prepared. Here's how we're going to do today. We're going to roll through the tips. Uh, my goal is to leave about 10 minutes at the end for your question. Yesterday, we had a great session of rapid fire questions. And if you're on LinkedIn, you're going to get some ideas on really how to explode your brand there. If you're not 
active on LinkedIn, you're gonna walk away with one or two things that you can implement and execute. Uh, and we're also gonna give you a great free resource, by the way, just so you know, Yakov and I uh, just this week decided that we're gonna do a more in-depth training, totally free, totally free. Uh, but we're gonna do it on Zoom next week so that some of you wanna go even deeper on LinkedIn, you can do that. No sales or selling or anything. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, trust me. Do I do plenty of that, but it's just gonna be a training session for you to get help, okay? So that's gonna be next week. Uh, but before we do that, my name is Ed Rush. I am here with my special guest, Yakov Smart. Uh, we're teaching the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. I said that I would tell you what G-I-F-T stood for. G-I-F-T stands for get in front of them. Anytime you want to build a business, step number one is G-I-F-T. So, Yakov, take us to tip number one. All right, let's do it. So tip number one um, is getting your profile set to public and getting your profile filled in. All so, right. so tell us what that means. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know this, but when you want to get in front of them, like Ed talked about, if your profile is not set to public on LinkedIn, I think we're going to show you how to do that in a second, then your visibility is being severely limited on your content and your exposure. And even the people LinkedIn is going to put you in front of as in terms of your profile on your business pages. So setting your profile to public, if you're a public person, you're a business owner, you want to grow a following, it's mission critical that you do that. And then we're going to show you the key sections of your LinkedIn profile. And just having them filled in is automatically going to give LinkedIn a cue that you want to be put out there. It's going to increase your visibility. And on the contrary, if you don't have these key sections filled in your profile or on your profile to begin with, LinkedIn is not going to give you nearly the visibility and free exposure you could be getting. So this is just the basics. I want to share my screen real quick and just show when... I mean, this is literally as basic as it gets, but it's huge. And I will tell you that my LinkedIn profile existed on LinkedIn for three years with, I probably had about 10% of it filled in. In fact, when Yakov and I got together, I one of the fields had, I was a, currently working for a company that I had sold two years before, okay? So I'm gonna show you my profile real quick and, and we'll just go through this. but. Little things like, for example, this about you is actually really important. Articles, we're going to get to content in a little bit. Um, things like experience, where you work, where you have worked. I mean, little things like this. I put, for example, I went to Top Gun, which was which was a school in the in the military. I didn't even think about listing some of those things, but those things are actually, you know, those things are actually pretty important. So, first step is. Your profile set to public, which is an obvious one, right? So the people can be in front of you and then filled in. Anything else on number one? Yes, yeah, just important to have those sections filled in. LinkedIn is going to ask you, well, LinkedIn is going to tell you once you have your sections filled in, they're going to say, congratulations, you have an all-star profile. All that means, which some people don't know, is that you have your sections filled in. So it's a step in the right direction. Yes. So, and, and, and this is one of the things I love about LinkedIn too. It's right on the top right-hand side. They will tell you how your profile fares compared to everyone else, okay? So I just kept on filling in things until I was in the top 90s, bottom line, all right? So if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Yakov Smart. We are teaching the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. Yakov, take us to number two. All right, tip number two. So, Make sure that you have your LinkedIn business page linked to your profile. So here's what that means, okay? Um, if you have a business, even if you're doing it on the side or if you have multiple businesses, just like on Facebook, you can have a business page on LinkedIn. Here's the difference though between LinkedIn business pages and Facebook business pages and why this is so huge, okay? On a Facebook business page, and a lot of you have probably been there before, where you can have 10,000 likes or 10,000 followers on your Facebook business page, but unless you're paying to play, unless you're doing paid traffic and paid ads, you're not gonna get much exposure and visibility. You're not gonna get much eyeballs. Versus a LinkedIn business page, you can have 10 followers on your LinkedIn business page. And what happens is if I'm following your LinkedIn business page and you post something and I go and I comment or I like it, people in my network are gonna see some of that content for free. So you could have 10 followers on your LinkedIn business page 
and get hundreds if not thousands of views and a ton of free exposure. And with that, the very first thing you want to do after you've created your LinkedIn business page, and by the way, if you're a speaker, for example, you can have a LinkedIn fan page too. It's very similar. It's just like creating a LinkedIn business page, but you want to link those to your LinkedIn profile um, to, first of all, get more exposure for both pages, but also to further cement your credibility. Because what happens then is, let's say I'm an ideal customer. I'm looking for you. I go and I check out your profile and your business page isn't linked. There's not going to be a picture that's filled in. And automatically what happens is you lose credibility. So you want to make sure that you have that business page set up. And if you have multiple businesses, it's okay to have multiple business pages set up. You also want to make sure that you link them to your profile too. Yeah. So uh, a couple fast action points right there. I'm going to show my profile again. If you look at my profile here, this is me at... LinkedIn. So this is Ed Rush. It's actually, uh, well, the link's long, but you could find me. If you go to edrush.com, for example, you can link, cl click, over, uh, there's a link at the top where you can click that. You can see over here, this is my business page. Now, most of the activity, really all of the activity is here on my actual personal page. But like Yakov just said, there's benefit to, oh, sorry, I put, I just kicked, hold on, <laughs> trying to get you back on. There's benefit to you having both of those pages. And again, if you have multiple businesses, like for example, Diana, who's here, she's got an organic gardening club. She's got her own business. You can link both of those. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. You can link unlimited business pages. All right, cool. All right. So that is tip number two, which is to link your business page to your profile. Again, the first and second ones were, were basic, but most of the people that I've worked with don't even have the basics done when it comes to that stuff. And it just helps LinkedIn put you in front of more people. And remember, G-I-F-T, get in front of more people. All right, so if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Yakov Smart, my go-to LinkedIn expert. Again, I said this in the introduction, he's not the guy that's out there uh, talking about LinkedIn. He's the guy doing LinkedIn. Uh, and he's got his own great profile, but he also behind the scenes is helping some clients that I know uh, as well. I just wanna catch up really quickly on uh, chat, uh, thank you so much for your awesome comments. If you haven't already done so, log into chat. It's either on the right-hand side for you or if you're on Facebook. It's in the comments section uh, below. Just tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do. I'd love to be able to say hello to you and see how I might help and serve you. Uh, we are in a series called The Expert Week inside of Bunker Bash. Uh, these are top my top five or four experts, I taught the first day, on five specific topics. And if you haven't had the opportunity to go back and listen to Marquetta talk about social media or Jim, or Paul Culligan talk about uh, podcasting or my series on live casting. Make sure that you jump in uh, and do that. I like uh, Edwin Berry. I like what you said. <laughs> no matter what we win, that harkens back to a comment. I said, it's either going to get worse and then we're going to win. It's going to get better and then we're going to win. Um, and um, it's awesome. So, yep, we do. Wendell, we need real leaders, buddy. And I know you're going to be influential in helping us raise those people up as well. Richard, good to see you as well. Um, the Michigan, Lake Michigan beaches were closed because, you know, your safety. I'm getting tired of hearing what I need to do for my own safety, okay? <laughs> so, hey, Marquetta Breslin's in the house. Great point. Teach practical, not theory when it comes to these social media platforms. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Hey, Russ Gordon, what's up, dude? Good to see you, buddy. Um, thank you, Denise. Denise, you are the best. Uh, she's filling in the points of... Um, our uh our teaching today and i think if i'm correct we are up to point number three uh if you did, if you just hang on if you just joined us uh my name is ed rush i'm here with my go-to linkedin expert yakov smart we're talking about the top nine linkedin tips to connect with your ideal customer take us my friend to number three all right tip number three as we get that up is your profile should position you as an authority. And this is a really important one. We'll spend a few minutes on this one, right? Because a lot of people in business or people wanting to build followings um, have a LinkedIn profile that just talks about their experience. It talks about their resume and it looks as if you know, you're looking for a job. Now, if you're looking to build a business on LinkedIn, you want to have a profile that you know really speaks to that ideal customer or that person that you want to serve or that person that you want to get in front of and conveys that you know what you're talking about. And some ways to do that are in the key components, for example, your headline, your about section, your experience section, to have your unique selling proposition in there, to show them 
why you care, to talk about you know some of the experiences that you've had, the clients that you've worked with. And often another really good thing to do when it comes to positioning yourself as an authority on LinkedIn is to address some key challenges or frequently asked questions that they have right in your profile. And you can do this in a number of different places, but the biggest sections for doing this are your headline, your about section, your experience, and a bonus tip that everybody should have. If you are building a business and a brand on LinkedIn, there's some really valuable real estate behind your picture. It's your LinkedIn cover photo. And understand most people are going to find you on LinkedIn on mobile on their cell phones. And that cover photo is the first thing they see. So it's a great way to showcase your brand. It's a great way to showcase your unique selling proposition. And it's a great way to make a first impression there as well, because you want them to get the image right away and immediately that you are that authority who can solve their problem. So this is tip number three, uh, that your profile should position you as an authority. I'm going to go back and pull up Yakov, my LinkedIn profile. Again, this is the one that we're using to uh, learn from. And there were some things you taught that I know, and there was something you taught that I didn't know. Uh, so you said, make sure your about page uh, and your activity and your experience position you as an expert. And I just want to pause just for a moment before I tell you the thing that I didn't know. And, and, and I just want to just give you permission to use this word authority. Uh, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Uh, and you remember from the show I did on social media with Marquetta, we talked about how you could you could spend 30 minutes a day for a month learning something, and you know more than 99% of the population, which automatically qualifies you to be an authority. You don't need to know more than everyone. In fact, in certain cases, you don't even need to know more than half of the people. I will tell you that I was hired by one of the best internet marketing experts in the world to come in and help him on his internet marketing. I was help, hired by one of the best speakers in the world, a guy named Brian Tracy, to come in and help him with uh, in a sp certain area of his speaking. Truth is, Brian Tracy is a better speaker than me, but he brought me in because he was looking for a second opinion on some ideas that he was implementing. So please cast aside that um, doubting spirit sometimes that we get that says, oh, really, I'm not qualified, and put yourself out there as an authority. Now, the thing that you said that I had never heard before was about the the, the photo. So can you explain, I'm going to pull my profile back up. Can you explain what you mean about uh, positioning yourself as an authority using your photo um, uh, real estate? Yeah. So, and you're, you've got this happening on your profile too. So if you guys, if you see Ed's profile picture, it's him. Um, and then behind his profile picture, there's Ed's cover photo. So it's the big photo in the background, right? And it notice how it has his branding, and I can't really read what those what those letters say, but it's automatically it says some things about its positioning. What a lot of people do on LinkedIn is they either have a big blank blue space on their LinkedIn cover photo or they don't have anything that's brand appropriate that looks nice and positions them as an authority. Yeah. And I'll add one more to this. I really like what you just said about this. So, by the way, this says um, this is a banner. It says four time number one bestselling author, speaker, internationally recognized consultant. It matches what's down here. Uh, but one of the things that I teach, you've, you've heard me teach this before, Yakov. like for example, if you go to edrush.com, which you should probably go to anyway, if you haven't been there and put your name and email in so that you get all the Bunker Bash updates, um, you'll see the colors, the look, and the feel of this website match, I, sh I should do it the other way, the colors, the look, and the feel of LinkedIn, banner, images, colors, are the same as the overall brand. And I always recommend when people start, this is why I love th this, by the way, this is why I love behind the scenes stuff. When you get stuff from like the real experts, because you're, you're getting this little checklist. If you've, if you've been watching, you're getting this checklist of things that you can do. One of the first things you can do is get some good pictures of yourself. Like I'm, I'm a little tired of seeing somebody's picture is like, you know what I mean? Like go get, spend 50 bucks, to go get somebody to give you like a good set of pictures or if you need to take some pictures of some recent events that you might have done and just get those pictures edited all right and you can just use those for linkedin and some other places anyway that was tip number three which is your profile should position you as an authority all right if you just joined us my name is ed rush i'm here with yakov smart we're talking about the top nine linkedin tips to connect with your ideal customer yakov take us to number tip number four all right, tip number four for connecting with your ideal customer. You want to participate in relevant conversations happening on LinkedIn. So this is a really important one because a lot of people ask me, they'll say, 
how do I figure out what content to post on LinkedIn? And it's so much easier, especially if you're just getting started being a content creator, it's often so much easier to just enter that conversation happening in people's minds. And there's a couple places, and we'll show you in a second where to find these conversations. There's three places where you can enter those conversations, and instead of figuring out what to post yourself, you can respond to the dialogues already happening and join that conversation as that credible authority and have more people find you, follow you, connect with you, and do business with you. There's three places to do this on LinkedIn. Number one is the general news feed, which is um, just like on Facebook, LinkedIn has its own news feed where you know people post content and it's a content feed. Next piece that LinkedIn has, and this is actually where I get my news because I don't watch the news, is the headlines. So you've got your daily headlines, things happening. So let's say, for example, you're a financial advisor and there's a headline over there on the right that's talking about 401ks, right? It would be a great place for you to jump in, comment, and when you do that, there's a direct link to your profile there. There's a direct link to where people can go and find you. And it's a great way to share your opinion and your authority. And the third place is within LinkedIn groups. You can also go in and enter those conversations because the great thing about LinkedIn content, there's generally less people posting content on LinkedIn. And there's also less people who are actively engaging and commenting with the average LinkedIn post. So if somebody has gone out of their way to post something on LinkedIn and you have something really insightful to say, it's a great way for you to build that connection. It's a great way for you to get additional exposure too. So go back to the original thing that I said, literally the first four letters that I started the show with, get G-I-F-T, get in front of them. So yesterday I was on the phone uh, with a speaker and he said to me, he said, Ed, I, I just feel like I'm invisible in the world today. And I said, everybody's invisible. <laughs> Everyone is invisible. Nobody is out there right now looking for you. They're looking for solutions to their problems. And your job is to get into that conversation and to make yourself an irrelevant authority. So let me pull up. I actually logged in, uh, Yakov, to my stream. So the three things you mentioned, they went by very fast. And I want to, I want to just uh, show you on LinkedIn where they are. But I'm going to need a little bit of help. So um, this is... Uh, this is the news feed, right? That I'm looking yep. at here, correct? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I see a post uh, from somebody like Dan Sullivan, who I follow and like, I used to be in Dan's strategic coach. Dan has uh, thousands and thousands of coaching members. What would I do here? Engage with his comment content, right? Is that the idea? Yeah, you could. The easiest way to do it, um, and this is what to do when in doubt, is comment below. You acknowledge what they shared, okay. and then ask a question. Okay. Based on what they share. Okay. So that's you. That's you. And, and that's not spamming. You're not throwing your links into something. You're not trying to take someone's, you're engaging with someone's content, which is what they want. What was the second way? Yeah. The second way, if you scroll up for me, please. Okay. All on the very right, you see where it says special report. So yeah. there is all these, all these news headlines, right? So if you click on one of those, just, you know, if you okay. pick, pick it, pick any of those and click on them. So this conversation is happening and it's almost like a forum. There's people talking about this. So you can comment on any of those threads and you're going to get exposure in that forum. So if you have, if there's a topic that's relevant to you and your business, it's a great way to find people that are already interested in talking about it. Okay. All right. And that was number two. And I won't say anything about Bill Gates <laughs> because you don't want me to. Trust me, you don't want me to. Go next. Number three. <laughs> number three is to find the LinkedIn groups um, that you're a part of. So, and Ed, I'm not sure how many groups you're a part of, but right. the way to the way to see that is under work. There's it should be a little button that says work. Yep. Okay. And then there's going to be a button that says groups. Okay. Yep. So, for example, let's see. So you're you're in these groups, so you can just pick any of these groups and click inside. And okay. sort of people. So this one, by the way, Event Planning and Management Association. This is for people who bring in speakers. Hint, hint. Pretty good place to be in a group. Okay. And truth is, I do events, right? So so do you probably. So this is this group. So tell me what to do here. Yeah. So people are posting. It's a similar thing to what you would do in the news feed. You see something relevant. You comment below acknowledge what they've posted and then ask a question. It's a great way to um, continue that conversation. And you'll also notice inside LinkedIn groups, not a whole lot of people are actually engaging with conversation. So it's a great way for you to stand out as well without having to do a whole lot of work. That's good stuff. By the way, I 
this doesn't happen all the time. I love it on these interviews when I get a great new nugget. Uh, and I will tell you, just so you know, I will be in one of these groups today uh, having a little conversation. So I, I, I like that. That was that was tip number four, a little nugget bomb uh, from Yakov. Participate in relevant conversations that are happening on LinkedIn. All right, I'm going to catch up with chat real quick. Hey, look at that comment. Ben, you can say that as much as you want. You will you will be very welcome in chat. I want to say that. Appreciate that. Uh, Denise, thank you so much uh, for the amazing notes and comments uh, that you are taking for everyone in chat. That is very nice. Uh, and then also, um, Lanika, who said, great point about connecting the business page to the personal profile. It's made a difference for me and my business. And if you don't know uh, Lanika, she's one of the best online business managers in the world. Uh, and if you need someone to help you systematize your business, she is a great one. Gary DeRitter, my man from South Jersey. Gary's speaking to my referees today, man. So he's going to be talking to them about building their immunity. Uh, he and his brother, Ed, have a really cool business. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, it's an honor to have you here on uh, The Bunker Bash. Uh, this is the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. We're in a series called Expert Week. Uh, today, we are talking about the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. I've got my go-to LinkedIn guru, Yakov Smart here with me today. Yakov's not the guy out there talking about it. He's the guy actually doing it. And you wanna, you wanna work with the people really doing it, not the pretend experts, okay? So uh, we've done the first four LinkedIn tips. I'm gonna do a quick summary. The first one is profile set public and filled in. The second one is link your business page to your profile. Third one is profile should position you as an authority. And we just covered participate in relevant conversations happening on LinkedIn. This is the top nine LinkedIn tips that connect with your ideal customer. Yakov, take us to tip number five. Tip number five. Tip number five is strategically join LinkedIn groups. So we talked about LinkedIn groups a moment ago, and this is a great... Um, Next step to that, so Ed mentioned a group, for example, for event planners, if you're a speaker. So what you can do inside of the LinkedIn search is you can find LinkedIn groups that are available right now, that are out there, that somebody's already gone out there and built those LinkedIn groups. And what you can do is strategically request to join the right groups. And I always share with people, you don't want to necessarily join the groups of other people who do the exact same thing as you do. You want to join groups of either your ideal customers, or in some cases, your ideal referral partners. And you want to pick, especially if you're starting out, I always say pick three to five groups that you can join strategically and be a part of so you have enough bandwidth to engage there. So tip number, let me pull it up really quickly. Tip number five was to strategically join LinkedIn groups. And I think we showed, if I can pull this screen back up, there it is. Uh, I think we showed on here, let me pull up my, um, you got some construction going on over there? Um, these were the groups that I was a part of, and these are the conversations that you can have inside of those groups. All right, cool. Anything else, Yakov, on number five? Yeah, one more thing. It's important to, and you can see on LinkedIn who the admin of the group actually is. And what's cool about that is, you know, let's say you want to connect with more of those kind of people, you can go out there and individually connect with that admin. All right, so I'm looking here about this group. Is that where I'm gonna find out where yeah. oh, here they are? Sorry, they're right down here on the right-hand side. So the admins of this speaker group right here are these three people, uh, Adriana Tassini, JJ Greenstein, and Daphne Obergon. It's like the hard, three hardest names to pronounce. <laughs> could have been Joe Smith, you know, it would have been a lot easier. So those are the people that you could connect with. And if I'm looking to connect with those people, what would I do? Yeah, so you would just go to their profile, so you can, you can pick one of those. And, All right. Yep. And then you can hit the blue connect button. All right. And then when I do this, I'm not, I'm not going to finish this. Should I add a note? Yeah. Okay. What should I say? So you can say something along the lines of, hi, looks like um, we're both part of this group or it looks like you, um, you manage this group, would love to connect on LinkedIn. And that, that would start the conversation, for example. All right, boom, boom, there we go. All right, so pro probably could have written something like a little bit longer. And 
And by the way, if I really wanted to, I just did it, but if I wanted to really go in depth, I could go to her profile, find something of interest, maybe that we connected on and then say something else in, in, the, in that introduction as well. All right, so that was tip number five, um, strategically join LinkedIn groups. If you just joined us, uh, my name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Yakov Smart. We're talking about the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal audience. We're moving fast and furious, dropping knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. We're going to open up for your questions in just a second. But Yakov, take us to tip number six. Tip number six. So merging your offline network into LinkedIn. So think about, especially if you're just getting started on LinkedIn, think about all the people in your phone. Think about the people who may be on your email list. Think about the people who maybe in your email contacts. And as you're getting started out building that network, you wanna make sure that you connect with those people who you already know on LinkedIn. Because what happens is if you go and connect with me, for example, is, now, all of a sudden, you and I are going to become what's called first degree connections. And that means anybody in my network, so those 12,000 plus people, they're all going to become second degree connections for you because you have at least one mutual connection with them. So it creates this sort of snowball sort of multiplier effect for you. That's why it's important as you're starting out that you at least connect with the people that you know from offline, that you connect with them on LinkedIn so you can see who else they know and that you can also um, build out those second degree connections. Interesting. So, you know, it, it reminds me. So when I work with speakers, I'll ask them sometimes, I'll go, all right, so how big is your email list? And sometimes they'll say, well, I don't really have an email list. And then I'll go, how big is your social media following? And they're like, I don't really have much of a social media following either. And I'll go, well, where else do people follow you? And they're like, I don't have anything. And then I pick up my phone because most people, if you count the connections on your phone, uh, most people have a hundred to a thousand, 1500. I mean, the thing never Rarely does anybody go through and delete them. And one of the strategies that I teach speakers is roll through your contacts every year to find, number one, the people that do events, and number two, the people that know people who do events, number three, the pe people who know people who go to events, right? So those, those three things. Well, it's interesting on LinkedIn too because you've got this huge database here that should be connecting to you there. Like, let me give you an example. One of the people I mentioned in chat, Gary DeRitter. I've known Gary I mean, dude, no joke. I've known Gary since I was probably three. I mean, it was, it's been a long time. They, they were family friends for a really long time. So he's been on my phone for a long time. So I could, I could connect my phone contacts and my LinkedIn contacts, and you should too. Remember, sometimes as entrepreneurs, we feel like a little resourceless, but there's, there's places that you have people on your email account. Shoot, you got people on your email account. And I think if I'm correct, LinkedIn has a way of, allowing you to cross those contacts over. Is that right? Yeah, you can merge those. Even if you get the mobile app on your phone for LinkedIn, it automatically is going to ask you, do you want to merge? And you can actually deselect. If you don't want to connect with somebody, you can uncheck the box. Yeah, so like if you got somebody on there you don't like anymore. <laughs> so, all right. So that was tip number six, merge offline network into LinkedIn. All right, so we're rocking and rolling. In a moment, we're going to be able to take your questions. Really quickly, I just want to catch up and chat and say hello to some of you who are awesome. Lonica, thank you for your very nice comment. I appreciate that. I am not awesome. I am simply studying to be awesome. All right. Um, I love this comment from Celise. She says, hi, Yakov. You even got this almost 70-year-old on LinkedIn. I love it. I love it. Charlie says, great info. Want to learn more next week. By the way, Charlie, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a little, little, little preview uh, the next, the next two. So tomorrow is publishing. Well, I'll, I'll just show it to you real quick. Uh, tomorrow is publishing with Jim House. Uh, but next week, I want you to see this. Next week, next week, I've got the next two shows lined up for Monday. I'm going to be teaching you uh, one of my favorite topics, actually, which is how to stop trading hours for dollars and start getting paid what you're worth on Monday. The show is about charging what you're worth and getting paid for what you know, not for what you do. And then on Tuesday, one of my friends uh, built a business that at one point was doing over $3 billion in sales. Think about that for a second. $3 billion in sales. So Mike's going to come in on Tuesday and I'm uh, together we're going to share billion dollar sales strategy. So let me tell you, man, the Bunker Bass is just getting better every week. Okay. So that's next week. 
If you haven't already hit that subscribe button on YouTube, it's over here, okay? Hit the button. And if you haven't hit the like button on YouTube or Facebook, you are required. <laughs> you have to hit it. That's just what, just the rules. That's just the rules. I'm a playing around. You don't have to if you don't like it. But if you don't like it, you're not paying attention. All right, so we're having fun today, man. Uh, this is the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. My name's Ed Rush. I'm here with Yakov Smart. We are up to tip number seven, dude. Take us to tip seven. All right, tip number seven, building hyper-targeted lists using LinkedIn searches. This is one we could spend a lot of time covering. I'm gonna give you the really important overview, right? So LinkedIn has ways for you to really pinpoint and find the exact people you're looking for, okay? And even if you have a free account on LinkedIn, using the free search, you can actually get really specific and find some of the right people that you're looking for, whether that's your ideal customer, a referral source, somebody who is in a specific industry, somebody in a specific niche, you get really specific and pull up a list of those people. It's hyper accurate within a matter of seconds. So, um, so building your list is tip number seven, building hyper-targeted list using LinkedIn searches. So I wanna react uh, quickly to two comments and then I'm gonna give you something for free. Uh, so Russ says, thinking out of the box and resurrecting dormant strategies are the keys to success during this time. Don't wait until the crisis is over to generate your next success. Get momentum going now. And this is a person who knows what he's talking about. Russ is in the real estate business, which obviously is affected by this, um, I was gonna say insanity. Uh, so by this crisis. <laughs> so um, so it's slowing down. Of course, now's the time to dig the well before you thirst. So Charlie said, I want to learn more uh, LinkedIn with Yakov. So here's what we did, Charlie. Uh, I, when I got on the phone uh, this week with Yakov, I realized some of the things we're teaching today, we're going to need, need to go deeper on. Uh, so what we did was we set aside time next Thursday. If you're watching this on a recording, we are in the first week in April in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic in the United States. So, so this event may have passed but there's probably still a way if you're watching this on video that you can get this content. But if you're watching live, you have the opportunity to join Yakov and I next Thursday. Uh, we're gonna do it at, I think it's two Pacific, if I'm correct, the time is on the page uh, below, so don't quote me on that. But the website is edrush.com slash disrupting LinkedIn, which is the website that you're gonna have to type in. Uh, and my team will put that in chat as well so that you have that available, and it will also be below uh, this video, either on Facebook or YouTube in the description. Next week, we're gonna spend an, at least an hour, but maybe a little bit longer if we need to answer your questions, going deeper on some of the strategies on LinkedIn. What we're teaching today is applicable and you need to start doing this stuff. On Thursday, we're gonna talk about how to really build your business inside there and how to get customers, the things that we don't have time to talk about today. So it's totally free uh, and we're not offering anything. So we're not selling a course or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> You've seen me do it before. It's an informational session, okay? Uh, you'll have some opportunity at the end uh, if you want to do a little consultation work with Yakov, but free, okay, just to get some help for your business. The only thing is my Zoom account right now has a 100, uh, 100 person limit. So, and I, I'm not going to extend that for next week because I want this to be a nice little community. So we're going to be opening it, but we're going to essentially have the first 98 people and, and we'll be full because uh, I'm going to send it out to my list, email list and everything. And so it's 100 because it's Yakov and me and 98 people, so there's your 100 right there. So the website is Disrupting LinkedIn. Uh, so go there, register, and then just show up early. That's how the that's how you're gonna get on, all right? So come five, 10 minutes early and you should be good to go, all right? So that's a little benefit for you um, at edrust.com slash disrupting uh, LinkedIn. And I just knew, like Charlie, I just knew people were gonna ask for more because this is one of those topics where people want more, and so do I, frankly. I need to, I almost 10,000 connections on LinkedIn and I still need to dial my game in even deeper. So I'm learning too. Okay, uh, if you just joined us, Yakov, do you wanna say anything else about that thing next week uh, or should we just keep rocking and rolling into tips eight and nine? Yeah, let's keep going. All right, cool. So if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Yakov Smart. Uh, we're talking today about the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. We're in the middle of expert week here on the Bunker Bash. Yakov, we've got two tips left. Take us to tip number eight. Okay, tip number eight is gonna be 
publishing thought leadership articles. So what's really cool about LinkedIn is there's an article platform that they bought a few years ago called LinkedIn Pulse. And what's really cool about that is you have an opportunity to, if you're, especially if you're blogging in other places already, like your website or other online media, what's great about putting these, even repurposing your blogs on LinkedIn and publishing these articles is they're on your profile permanently. They're circulating throughout LinkedIn permanently. It's a great way for you to position yourself as that authority and build credibility. It's a really sleek publishing platform and publishing just one, two or three of those articles is a great way, again, for you to cement your thought leadership and put your ideas out there. And what you can do is you can feature those articles. They're on your profile. They're going to be distributed in the news feed. And, you know, when I look at when I work with people, we talk about the overall online presence. It's a great way to share those articles because they're great for your SEO, for getting you that extra online visibility and, frankly, credibility as well. And so, Ed, I think we can show people how to go and publish those articles because it's all you yep. need to yep. do. Yep. So, so I put up my I pulled up my LinkedIn articles. So you'll see, for example, these are my followers, 9,842. So, dude, we only have like 158 to go. Let's rock it, man. Let's get 10K. Hey, if you're not following me on LinkedIn, get in there and click the connect button, okay? Uh, so here's an example. For uh, for example, last week I uh, published one of the Bunker Bash shows that's already been viewed over 100 times uh, sitting here with some comments. And this is um, 134, right? So here's some examples of some of the content that's been posted. But I also on my feed have, for example, I think it was Linda who posted this resource and then I commented and shared it back on my uh, feed as well. And I've had, I'm trying to find them, but I, it's, 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 it's down here. I've had posts on LinkedIn, Yakov, that I've had articles that were read 1,500 times, 1,600 times. Um, and so like you can see like this video, for example, had 340 views. That's, those are actually like legitimate numbers. And on Facebook, people are really watching you, you know? Yeah, it's a great way to get free exposure and... There is a little less competition for attention on LinkedIn in the news feed. You know, people aren't posting as frequently generally, and it's higher quality content. You've got a higher quality audience that's going to find you, find your business through the content that you're posting on LinkedIn. And articles are a great way to do that and to further establish your thought leadership. Yeah. And right now, LinkedIn, as far as I can tell, they're not throttling like Facebook. Essentially, if you post something on Facebook, nobody's going to see it unless you pay for it or unless it gets shared a lot. Uh, LinkedIn, for the most part, is still putting things in front of people's newsfeed. And I can tell you that won't last forever. There's a lot of junk that people put on LinkedIn right now. And so LinkedIn will start doing that. You might as well take advantage of it while you have the opportunity. All right. So good stuff, man. That was tip number eight. I love that, by the way. Uh, let me just say one more thing about publishing articles on LinkedIn. I'll tell you the decision I made about two years ago in my business. I was publishing articles on my blog and I would get 20 people, 30 people, 50 people organically to go to that article. I would publish my article on LinkedIn and I'd have 1600 people read my article and I'd get You there? Yeah, you there? We just had a little internet hiccup. All I'm telling you is it's the it's a, there's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> It's all good stuff. The moment I start saying we got to change leaders, though, man, the internet starts going down. All right, so back to back to the comp point. I started posting my content on LinkedIn because I don't need it on my website for search engine optimization, but I want it in front of people. And so and so and I didn't put it both places because LinkedIn knows there's duplicate content. So do you want to talk really quickly about posting on LinkedIn versus your website? Yeah. So posting on LinkedIn, you want to have the right keywords in your article. Um, you want to make sure that you that you post it inside of LinkedIn Pulse, right? And if you're if you've got something on your website, you want to slightly differentiate that article, right, as to what you're posting on LinkedIn because you don't want your website SEO to be off. But I know I personally, especially if I'm putting in very specific keywords. So, for example, if you've got a niche that you're marketing for, right? And so, for example, I put something out there for the mortgage niche a few years ago, and still to this day, I'm getting leads. From that specific article and when i google that specific term and i forget what it what the 
exact headline was. But to this day, when I Google it, that LinkedIn article is the first thing that comes up on Google. So if you think about that, it's crazy how much SEO LinkedIn has because of all its SEO pull with Google. Yeah, I mean, so back to this again, and I had this, I had this like 20 minute discussion with a client who's like, yes, but I want all the search engine optimization to go to my website. And I'm like, no, you don't. You just want people's eyeballs on you. And if it's on LinkedIn, great. YouTube, great. Facebook, great. Instagram, great. Doesn't matter. Remember what I said in the beginning, G-I-F-T. Get in front of them. And right now, the world is not on your website. They're not on my website either. They're on some social media platform like LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or I don't know, TikTok, who knows? Someplace like that. And your job is to get in front of them. All right. So that was tip number eight. Love it, man. This is good stuff, dude. Uh, publish th uh, thought art, uh, thought leadership. Publish articles. Publish articles. All right. So uh, we're getting into our last tip. If you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. Uh, we are in the Bunker Bash top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. I'm interviewing my go to guru, Yakov Smart. We've done all eight tips. We're on number nine. Take us to number nine, dude. Tip number nine, and this is something that I know we're going to go into a lot more depth on next week on next week's training. This is sending magic question multiple multi-step messages, right? And so a lot of people wonder, because the great thing about LinkedIn, and this is think about how powerful this is, right? You have the exact decision maker or your exact customer or that event planner um, that might have you on their stage. You have the ability after they connect with you to reach that person directly and that message is going to go to them on their cell phone, okay? So I'm going to say that again. You have the ability to reach that person directly on their cell phone with your message through LinkedIn. So it's really, really powerful stuff. Now, what's happened is some people have don't have the right frame of reference, don't have the right framework for these messages. And what they wind up doing, and some of us have gotten these messages, I know I have, where they send you this long five-paragraph sales pitch right after connecting. And I'm just going to say this right now. Don't ever do that, no matter what your business is. It's just... It's one of the worst things you can do. It's one of the ways you can really turn somebody off. So instead, you want to think about messages as multiple steps. You want to think about it as having somebody go up a ladder, right? Or what the step-by-step -step process is. If, you, if they are your ideal customer, for them to immediately, using your profile, start to think of you as that authority to tr be able to trust you through your messaging to raising their hand that they're interested in learning more about your content, products, or services. And when we talk about multi-step messaging on LinkedIn, and something we're obviously going to have a much further discussion on next week, but when we talk about messages, a good rule of thumb is to end your message with a question, a question that gets them to lean in, raise their hand, gets them to think of something. So two thoughts really quickly. Uh, first of all, I love what you said about how to communicate with people. Look, in the real world, you don't say, hi, my name's Ed. What's your name? Hi, my name is Yakov. And then you don't go for like 15 straight minutes about your latest product. That might come later on in the conversation, but it doesn't come in the beginning. And you, and if you wouldn't do it in the real world, don't do it on social media. And I will tell you, full disclosure, I love automation. And some of my social media process is automated. But before I automated, for example, my LinkedIn process, before I automated some of that, I'm going to tell you what I did. I connected with people and I, I literally connected and had conversations and had more conversations and had more conversations. And I got better at describing who I am and I got better at asking questions. So for example, one of the things that I was doing in my conversations is, is I would go, I believe great businesses solve big problems. What's the big problem you solve? And then people would always answer that in the connection request because they wanted to tell me about their business. And so when I began to automate it, they were actual real conversations that they were based on, not some weird markety uh, kind of thing. The second thing is some of you are awesome. And all of you are awesome, but some of you are have scored high today in the awesomeness quotient. Uh, this is Rudery, John, and uh, and my man Oz, uh, who said uh, they sent me um, they sent me connection requests. So boom. Now you're in my profile and now I only have like 140 left to go. <laughs> hey, never pass up an opportunity to connect with your audience, baby. So uh, I just wanted to just give them a shout out and just say, hey, I'm now connected with you on my professional profile uh, <laughs> on LinkedIn. All right. So that was tip number nine. Oh, man, I'm having fun today, dude. Uh, send magic question multi-step 
messages. I love that. I love the question. So here's what we're going to do now. Uh, we've got about four minutes left in the show. So real quick, Yakov, I'm going to ask if there's anything I should have asked you, and then we're going to get into some rapid fire questions. What do you got? No, I think we covered a lot of ground today. I think next week, like you mentioned, we're going to get more specific on the actual process, the step-by-step -step system. So if this is something that resonated with you, definitely check us out next week. We're going to be diving a lot deeper and answering some more good questions. Cool. The website's edrush.com slash disrupting LinkedIn. Heather Smith's like, boom, I registered. You're, you're in. Dennis, boom, is in. It's going to be awesome. All I will tell you is the bridge line thing. I'm not like, sometimes people are like, we can only take a certain number of people. It's 100, all right? So there are 100 people, which means 98, and that's by joining. So just come early, all right? And I won't tell everybody that, but you can tell, you can say that. Um, Mojo Mindset, my man says, I'm glad these are recorded. I'm really learning some great ideas. Thank you for saying that, Ben. Uh, that's very nice of you uh, to say that. I'm. I, there was a question in here someplace. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, Doug says, it's annoying to receive a sales pitch from a new connection when they have no clue what solution I need. And let me just say, there's nothing wrong with using LinkedIn to further your business, to grow your brand and to get customers, but do it like you would normally do it. Like at a trade show, if you're talking to somebody, you don't immediately jump into the pitch. In dating, you don't jump right into the pitch, right? You you slowly, it's like uh, cooking. Somebody who, somebody on the show this week said it was like cooking. Uh, and, oh, Marquetta, I think said it was like cooking in a crock pot, right? Um, all right, so I see, hold on, I saw a question but I want to, I think it was a little bit higher. So if you ask the, oh, Dennis asked a question. Uh, oh, sorry, Gisbert asked the first question. Is there a way to download the messages from LinkedIn to have them in one text doc or download your contact list to migrate the contacts to a mailing list or another system? I do know the answer to number two is yes, because I have downloaded my email. And a lot of times LinkedIn gives you their email too. Uh, but t number one, is there a way to download your messages uh, from LinkedIn, Yakov. There used to be. Um, I don't think there was any more. Number two, it's an interesting question because LinkedIn, and I remember, Ed, when we were first started working together several years ago, where you could take the CSV and literally yep. download all their email addresses. Well, as of, I think, a year and a half ago, they they don't do that anymore. So you well, can now. So yeah. they gave people the option to opt out of email, of getting of showing people their emails. So yeah. about a month ago, I downloaded the whole, my whole 9,500, 9,800 people just to see what was available. And there were about 300 of the people left their emails in there. So just so you know, yeah. most people on LinkedIn opt out, opted out of that whole, like, give me, give me the email thing. Um, yeah. So Dennis asked a question, number two, business page linked to profile. Are these two separate pages like the Facebook personal and business page? or different parts of the same LinkedIn account? What, what's, what, do you, what do you got for that? Yeah, there are two separate pages. Yeah. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna make the page logged into your LinkedIn account, Dennis, but there are two separate pages. Yeah, so for example, at one point when I was on LinkedIn, when I first started on LinkedIn, I owned a company, which I don't own it anymore, I sold to my partners, called Get Notice, Get Found, which was a company that worked with attorneys. We, we did marketing for attorneys. At the same time, I still owned and operated Ed Rush & Associates, which is my speaking consulting business. Uh, and I think at the same time, I actually also had then uh, a business, a, a, my fishing business or my, 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 my media expert media business. So all three of those, Dennis, can be businesses that are linked on your profile, but they also stand alone as businesses. For example, the lawyer business had three owners and we each had our own profiles, but then we also had a business. Is that, is that right? Is that safe to say? Exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, let's see. Number... Uh, another question, and by the way, we got time for maybe one or two questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to ask you your big uh, big parting shot, uh, Yakov. Denise says, I'm sick of getting contacts who really want to date. <laughs> hey, there could be worse problems in life, man. I'm telling you. So sick of contacts who really want to date. Any ideas on how to address this? Should I address it in my profile? <laughs> it's annoying. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's funny. It's funny. You, you, you go. That's a good question. I mean, it's actually not uncommon. I mean, a lot of people ha have that issue. How can, um, how can it never happened to me. Not once, dude. Not one time. So, it's something I need to know about me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, good. Good. Is there a way to do it? Is there is there an elegant way for her to say, "I'm good. I don't need a date." <laughs> What's or should she just like delete those people and block them and then move along? 
I would delete those people. I'd also have like a canned response, like, hi, I'm, while I'm flattered that you would um, think of me like that, I'm happily married and not looking. However, I do have a great product or service that you can get at this website. I would, uh, I, I would put something like, like that out there. All I know, all I, hey, I, was, I just said to say, it's a good problem to have. Uh, all right, Dr. Tom says, do you, can you create an email list from LinkedIn contacts? Yes, you can export your contacts out of LinkedIn, it's just that the only email, the only emails that you're gonna get are the people who have consented to allow LinkedIn to do that. And it's a lot less than it was before. Yeah. Uh, another quick question from Oz at Iron Cornway, who I just connected with on LinkedIn. I received an invitation to contribute content by a LinkedIn, by a LinkedIn employee. Legit or is it a marketing tactic for their product or service? What do you think? I, I don't know who the employee was and I don't really know the context. I would, um, I, I think, you know, part of what, what they want you to do, like they had something where they wanted you to spend on LinkedIn advertising and they gave you like a $50 credit. So I'm not sure. I mean, it depends what business you're in. I mean, it, it could be legit. Um, I'd have to look into that a little more. But that's It's awesome that you received that. I mean, they're, you're at least getting noticed. Yeah, so Oz, if you want to send that to me, I will connect you on the Yakov via email. Uh, and you guys can talk, he can see the actual email and you guys can talk about it as well. So very, very cool. Thank you, Barry. He registered, by the way, it's at, uh, sorry, it's uh, edrush.com slash disrupting LinkedIn. That's a training we're going to do next week. If you're watching this on video, it may have already passed. You could probably still get the training uh, on a recording, but we're going to do just an in-depth uh, session about an hour, but we'll probably stick around and answer questions uh, specific to your LinkedIn profile. And it's Yakov and me together teaching you LinkedIn stuff. And I just thought, we, we're not, we didn't do this for everything this week, but I thought it would be a good way for you to go deeper. I just knew we were gonna need to go deeper and I can just tell by the questions already. Um, <laughs> it's the quest. My response is always, thank you for the flattery, but I'm already taking. Um, <laughs> I like that. Uh, Denise says, uh, what, what is your thought quickly, Yakov, on premium, taking up a LinkedIn on premium or not? I personally do it. Um, once you're getting up and running, I highly recommend it. But we'll talk about it next week. That's a next really week good we'll talk, And one of the, there's a feature on that I love that where you can see the people who viewed your profile. Huge, huge, huge. Just to be able to connect immediately with somebody who's like a meeting planner who may have just looked at your profile is actually really kind of a cool little thing to have. All right. One more question from Dan G. And then we're going to wrap up, uh, my friend. A uh, question on tip number four. The headline feeds. Can we set this feed to the area or industry we're in? Do you understand the question? Yeah, I do. The way to do, the way to do that, Dan, is to be very intentional and connect with people specifically in your area. And if your network is full of those people, that's what you're going to get in your feed. Okay, good. Very good. All right, buddy, I'm going to give it to you here in about 20 seconds just for a wrap up. Let me just tell you where we are and where we're going. Uh, and then Yakov's going to drop. And by the way, dude, this is such a great show. Um, you really, really shared some great applicable content. And the promise of this show, The Bunker Bash, is the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Look, it doesn't make any sense for us to talk about the world without changing the world. It doesn't make any sense to talk about LinkedIn without fixing it and making it better so that you can connect with the world. Uh, and so what I would love for you to do right now in chat, uh, and I know tomorrow's Friday, Focus Friday, we're gonna talk about implementation items. But since today I thought was so great, what I would love for you to do is tell us inside of chat, either on Facebook or YouTube, what your number one action item is, the number one thing you're going to implement from what you learned today. If you're watching this on a replay, put it right in the comment section, okay? Uh, and and just, just a side note on comments, any, any nice comments you wanna make on the video here today or any of the previous videos, I would love that. I just really appreciate that as well. Uh, but tell us in the comment section, what's what's your what's the first thing you're going to implement? And there's some fast, fast things. Change your picture, change your headline, change your uh, about, you know, uh, put in your college, you know, like your experience or something like that. Uh, and so today uh, was the top nine LinkedIn tips to connect with your ideal customer. Don't forget, we're in expert week next week or sorry, tomorrow. Uh, Jim House and I are going to talk about books. And let me tell you, I don't think there is a single opportunity to present yourself as an expert quite like writing and publishing a book. Uh, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. But before we get to tomorrow, 
We're going to wrap up the show today. Yakov, give us your last minute parting thoughts. Yeah, it was good being here. It was good at hanging out. I mean, if we are on LinkedIn already, which I know a lot of you are, there's a great opportunity there. There's a lot of potential for actually growing your business and growing a following. And even if you've done a few things on LinkedIn, definitely encourage you to dive a little deeper. It's important now more than ever to be able to virtualize a lot of your marketing and your lead generation. And this happens to be one of the be one of the best ways, if not the best way, for you doing that. Amen to that. All right. So get into implementation. By the way, some really great uh, comments. Uh, uh, Gary said, loaded with great content and practical tips. I love it. Um, <laughs> Denise said, thanks, Ed. I always get a great feeling leaving this community. And then she said, oops, that, that doesn't sound right. I know what you mean. Like when we're done with the show, <laughs> that's great. Thank you, Robert, John, my man. I really liked your implementation item. Change the photo. <laughs> she said... <laughs> It makes her want to go in and change her LinkedIn, LinkedIn photo. Look, I'm just telling you, if people are asking you for a date, then, you know, you should smile because that doesn't happen to me. Uh, Wendell, complete a fill in the profile. Matt, profile. Dan G, business profile page. Boom. Participate in relevant conversations. Doug, I liked it. Gary. Dennis, great stuff. I'll look into the business page part of LinkedIn. Thanks. And we'll see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow as well. Yakov. Thanks, dude, for your time. Uh, it was awesome, man. You gosh, I knew you knew your LinkedIn stuff, but I didn't. I didn't know it, that you knew it this well. Um, I mean, I've seen you work it, but teaching it too is just really great. So, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, register for next week's webinar, EdRush.com/disruptingLinkedIn. Yakov and I are going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to get it on even deeper than we did today. Uh, and look, you already got some really great things that you can apply from today. We're going to go deeper next week, but even if you don't, tomorrow, come back in and join us for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. My name's Ed Rush. This is The Bunker.